Well, well, let's get into it here today. Um, I have the pleasure of tag teaming with the one and only father of mine, Tim Redman, here today. And so uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be talking really about hiring, a topic that really any business can benefit from and uh, kind of the mindset, the approach that we want to have on that. And then I'm going to go ahead and cover the actual skills and implementation. So glad to see Roger Patterson here because I did not know for sure if he was going to be here today, but I actually uh, took a screenshot of a tool that Roger actively uses and has been using that's really, really helpful for hiring. It's, it's just a, a simple tracking tool that I wanna go over for you uh, with you guys today. But uh, let's get into it here. Uh, okay, so um, what's on the agenda today? So we're gonna have a teaching moment. Uh, uh, how to scale your business very uh, with hiring, the applicable skill, building a productive team. We're really going to be going into uh, how to find and uh, leverage good candidates quickly. Um, we're going to do it now. We're going to be going over the specifics of a hiring process, what that hiring process should look like, and the nuances that you may need to make for your business. And then we want to open it for, for some questions here. And so uh, went over business wins of the week. I forgot to start the slideshow. Uh, I like featuring a client picture whenever we do this. This is Upfront Plumbing and Drains. They're an awesome business that I work with in Salt Lake City. Um, they've got a sharp team here. Cool thing about these guys, they started their business from scratch. Two guys, Ryan and Trent, in Salt Lake City. They had a 20 year uh, uh, history working for other plumbing companies. Started in February of 2021. And that's the team that they've already built. Uh, they had a very profitable first year. And so uh, anyway, let's get into it. Uh, Dad, do you want to go ahead and, and, and kind of yeah, take yeah. over here? Would you like to share your screen and control the slideshow? You want me to do it no. for you? Yeah, if you don't mind, let's go to the next uh, slide here. Um, what I want to talk about is just pulling back a little bit on uh, what Robert's going to be sharing, just the specifics of the hiring process. And we have found that even though you may be active with a hiring process, just hearing it again, there's going to spark something that maybe you're not doing or you can do better. So be really paying attention to that. But I want to set the foundation for what Robert's going to share and just pull back a little bit. Um, you all remember that monster.com, uh, that recruiting uh, commercial that says, hey, when I grow up, I want to be promoted to middle management. When I, you know, when I grow up, I want to be a, an owner of a struggling small business that stays small. Um, but that's not in any of you guys. You guys want to build your business. And so just to, just to really pull back, you know this, but I want to just say it. Building your business is really building your team. Building your business is building your team. And so these wonderful people that you have as employees, uh, and if you're going solo, we're gonna get you into building your team real soon here. But for most of the people on the, uh, on the Zoom call right now, you've got a team of people. Uh, how many of you absolutely love your people? Can you show thumbs up here? How many of you are lying right now? <laughs> so, you know, it's it's something that you know. I was just talking to a guy who has about a hundred million dollar business, and we're building. We have a long term plan to get to a billion dollars on it. And I keep have to remind him. It says your core skill right now is not negotiation, not in setting up deals, not networking, all the things that you've really been uh, built on, you relied on, that's not the most important skill. The most important skill right now is attracting and developing these leaders that are gonna get you to that billion dollar mark. And so that's what we're talking about here. Building your business is really, the main focus of be building your business is building your team. So let's go on to the next slide here, um, Robert or whoever's doing that. So. Uh, the first point I want to make here, if we just have the first click. Um, oh, 
we have a click? Boom. Okay, well, we have all of them coming together. So that, that's okay, that's okay. Building, building wealth, you know, how many of you have got like a, a goal to get your income is at least five times greater than where you're, you're at right now with your business? Whatever your net income, whatever your profits was at the end of 2021, you'd like to see that grow at least five times. Can you go thumbs up here? Just so I can see, boom, hands up. All right, so that, you know, building wealth is really building your team. That's the essence of what wealth building is all about. Nobody builds wealth just by themselves. There's a team, especially in your line of work, there's a team that you have to have. And so the main role that you have as a leader, as simple as this is, as, as obvious as this is, I just want to remind you of this. Your, your role as a leader is to attract and develop your people. And if you don't do that, then your ability to, to build your business, your ability to really build long-term lasting wealth is really compromised in that regard. You have to see that's your, one of your main, main jobs. Now, I come from a place of faith and using the Bible, and uh, I believe that the ultimate test of a leader is how they function in a team and how he or she functions in a team as a member and then as a leader of it. And uh, this is this is the make or break point here. When God created Adam and Eve, he wasn't just, you know, having a man and woman that he created. He was building a team. He was building a, a family. So I want to I want to remind you of that real, real simple thought here is your main role is developing your people attracting value for people. So in order to do that, uh, how many of you have ever been held hostage, hostage by an employee? Can you, Ro okay, Roger, Zach. Uh, Zach, could you unmute yourself and tell us a little bit about what you're talking about here? Sure, we, uh, you know, we, we have a guy we hired as a D and he becomes a C-level player and we move him into a spot of responsibility and everybody else is newer than he is and we just think we got to stick with him and we drag it out too long and he quits or we fire him eventually and we realize we should have been developing somebody else or, you know, trust in our systems to hire somebody new and develop them more quickly uh, if they have the right attitude and skill set, mindset. Yeah, real good. And uh, Bryce, if you don't mind, let's pop it on gallery here um, and uh, take down the uh, PowerPoint here for a second. I want everybody to see everybody. Uh, Roger, do you mind sharing what you're talking about where an employee tried to hold the business hostage? Well, uh one instance that we had, we had a guy, he was, uh, he was basically a top producer. I mean, the guy was really good, had really high numbers, clients loved him. He followed the process really, really well. Um, but I guess over time, over the course of about three years, eventually his ego got the best of him. And uh, culturally, he became very toxic and uh, had quite a few discussions with him. Ultimately, <clears throat> the end was I had to fire him. And in retrospect, I waited longer than I should have uh, to do that. And part of the issue was just the open communication, the guys not sharing with me everything that was going on, things of that nature. But uh, it, it's very true what people say is when somebody's toxic in your organization, I mean, it's like a cancer and it will spread. There's only one way to get rid of it, and that's to cut it out. That's just, so true. Yeah. And so I, I remember uh, one time I was uh, watching a football game and uh, actually uh, Robert was uh, was playing. He was a uh, uh, a one man wrecking crew as a linebacker and uh, took took out a, a number of people. Sometimes they didn't get up. Um, sometimes he'd look up and <laughs> 
and my boy. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I remember us uh, uh, playing uh, Metro. Victory was playing Metro, and a guy sat next to me, and he was just overwhelmed. And I'm like, "What's going on?" He says, "Oh gosh, there's this one employee that's just just dragging our whole business down, and he's he's trying to tell me what we ought to have the pricing at. He needs he's." he's He's like uh, threatening to leave and take our, our customers. And I say, well, what are you what are you going to do about it? Well, I don't know. What should I do? I said, fire his behind, and then if the rest of his body is attached to it, then that the rest of him needs to go too. You know, just fire him. And he says, well, I can't do it. He's going to take all my bed. I said, your people are a lot more loyal to you than than you think you you are, you think they are, but just communicate to each one of them, you know, just send out a, uh, a, a voice message or send out a, a little text, call, call your main customers, do whatever you need to do. He said, well, there's, there's no way that I, I'm just, I'm just stuck with this. And I remember talking to him like two weeks later and he said, Tim, I finally got, you know, enough was enough. And I finally just, kind of lashed out and just said, hey, you're gone, you're fired. And he said, you wouldn't believe the peace that's in our whole business. And just in the, just within a days here, first of all, no clients have, uh, have threatened to leave. Uh, I got on the phone and I'm calling people and just making sure, hey, you're doing okay and getting lined up for that. He was a chimney sweep guy. And so he's lining up the next job, didn't really lose anybody. Sometimes you do lose people. Sometimes it's, but it, but it's worth getting rid of those folks here. So what is, what is, let's go back to the outline just for a second. Uh, does anybody else have a time where you've had uh, hot, you've had hostage, uh, you've held hostage by, uh, anybody just speak up here and we'll, uh, I think we'll wrap Jeff, this up here. Jeff is Thank wanting to share here. Yeah, all right, yeah, go back to gallery here if you don't mind, uh, Bryce. <laughs> It's, uh, it's Robert who's, who's doing this, Dad. But Okay. All right. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Did I unmute it? Okay. So yeah. I, had, I had a situation uh, to where I had a guy that uh, was like an A player, and he knew it, and he was uh, always using it to get whatever. He, he only cared about one person, himself. And so uh, this last – we do water restoration. And, and in, in Texas, in last February, we had snowmageddon. Oh, yeah. So uh, it was crazy. And so that's the time for us to go make as much money as we can. <laughs> and uh, I texted him, called him, and uh, he said his words to me were, what's in it for me to get out there and freeze my balls off? And uh, so wow. long story short, his cancer was starting to spread to other people. And so I just fired him on the spot. And then the other two guys that were starting to pick up his cancer – showed up an hour early to work the next day because they saw me fire him. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, yeah, that was, it was hard because he's such a good employee as far as he could sell closed deals, but he, uh, he wasn't a team player. He didn't care about anything right. as long as he could make the most. So he's kind of like, uh, he was like draining the milk out of the cow. Nothing yeah. left me, you know? And so, so I'm so glad you shared that Jeff. Uh, this is uh, most of us have had this kind of a challenge in one way or the other, and we get afraid of letting people go, or we don't want to, you know, we want to do the right thing. We want to honor people, but I'm just telling you guys, the solution to uh, your business growth and your growth of your wealth is, is like, it, it's like uh, nurturing your garden you know, tending your garden, weeding, weeding out your garden. And you've got to keep the guy, good guys in there. Guys are going astray. You address it. Uh, there's a bloke, broken windows theory that Giuliani applied to New York City. You know, when he just said, hey, listen, we just will immediately address the situation. Broken windows theory says if your window is broken in a big apartment complex, nothing's done about it. It actually encourages more crime. But if you immediately address it, it actually reduces the crime. And so it's, it's all that to address the issues quickly. And one of the biggest solutions that we have found, as simple as it is, is create a, uh, an 
uh, always be hiring type of hiring process. And if you, you know, Robert, if you can pop that back on there and I'll just cue this up for you to take over on the hiring process, you wanna always be interviewing, always be in the process of hiring so you're never held hostage to your employees. And it may take a while for you to really build that winning team, but stay with it because it's worth it. And that's the way that you're gonna grow massive wealth that your business is uh, very capable of doing for you. So Robert, why don't you take over with- oh, Whoops, sorry. <laughs> Okay, um, so here's uh, what I want to go over. And, and before I go over this, uh, for, first of all, real quick, I'm going to pull a move that uh, uh, Tim's been using. Is anyone actively implementing a Redmond growth hiring system right now? Has anyone already started on that? Just a uh, show of hands here. Okay. Um, uh, can can we have a few people share real quick? Uh, maybe not 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 share the entire system you're running, but maybe what you thought about hiring before you ran the system, compared to uh, uh, what you think about it now and kind of insights that you have now. Uh, I saw that Jason Miller. Do you mind if I call on you? Uh, uh, could you share maybe certain um, uh, ideas that you had, assumptions that you had about hiring compared to what you know now, now that you're running the system. So I'm, I'm pretty picky in my company. I've, I've been generally having two to four plumbers with me right now. I have two. And, uh, so the part that I've implemented with Redmond from Redmond is just the continually having the ad out on Indeed and getting the applicants, screening the applicants. I haven't really been too happy with what's been coming across. We are actively interviewing a couple of people uh, at the moment. Yeah. So I'll be making a phone call today. And, but um, obviously before it was kind of just, word of mouth one of my guys would say hey there's a guy i could that we could hire and i'd interview him give him the job give him a chance and things like that a lot of people don't work out but i got a couple of really great guys right now but uh yeah that's that's really the only thing holding me back is probably myself um and my standards for my my company you don't, you don't have to beat yourself up across. You don't have to beat yourself up. We're, we're, we're all, we're all making progress. We're all getting better, but, uh, I like what you said, uh, and that's a really crucial part of what I want to cover here is, is always have the, the ads posted. And, and, and here's, here's why I'm wanting the, to get some feedback here is this, is that, um, I, I, uh, we, we maybe have, I've seen a lot of times, a lot of people say things like there's no one else out there, you know, that I can hire. Uh, Robert, I've looked everywhere, you know, uh, and, and they're just, no one's looking. There's, there's, there's no one. And, and if they are looking, they, they show up drunk, high, whatever, they're unreliable. And then, especially with newer clients, I'll, I'll ask them, okay, well, how are people hearing about the job? And they're like, well, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, how, I mean, how are you getting applicants? And a lot of times it is the, oh, maybe I put something on Craigslist, maybe I put something on Facebook, maybe it's 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 word of mouth. And so where I'm getting at is that um, there may be certain uh, objections that we have, there may be certain ideas that we have uh, about the hiring process before we even really investigate and try it out. And those assumptions could actually be holding us back. And so I wanna go over what we have seen really work and uh, what is continuing to work for uh, service companies, trade companies, construction companies across the entire country. I wanna go over that system with you. Uh, before I really uh, get into the Redmond Growth hiring system here, I kinda wanna go over the current hiring climate. And I'm going over this to almost, uh, uh, to really establish the need of having a system like this. But you guys may not know the actual 
percentages, the actual stats I want to go over here, but, but you definitely already know this from experience. First thing here is this, 68% of trade skill businesses, so that's HVAC, plumbing, uh, 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 you know, electrical, the, the trades struggle to hire skilled workers. So the majority of people are struggling right now. And 35% of business owners are understaffed, some extremely understaffed. Not new information to us, right? According to Harvard Business Review, 81% of candidates are lying in your interviews, telling an average of, you can look this up, telling an average of 2.19 lies every 15 minutes of interview time. And 85% of candidates are lying on the resume. No surprises there, right? Uh, according to a Gallup poll, and the last time that this was done was a number of years ago, but in 2015, they found that 68 Robert, Robert, did you want to show up your slide on these? Oh, my gosh. Here? Am I not no, sharing no my problem. screen? Yeah, no problem. This is, this is why, uh, yeah. So here, here <laughs> I'm like going over slides and no one's seeing them. 68% of the American workforce is not engaged in their jobs, according to Gallup polls. That was in 2015. Since 2015, what's happened? We've got iPhones, everyone has them. We've got social media apps, everyone has them. Uh, the study has not been done since then, but chances are that number has actually increased significantly to the number of the US workforce that is not engaged in their jobs. What does that mean to not be engaged? It means they show up to work looking for other things to do than what they're being paid for. 68% of the American workforce uh, is not engaged in their jobs. So what's kind of the situation? It's hard to find people. And the people that we do find, the vast majority of them lie to you in an interview. You can't really know, you know who they're going to be. And then the 68% six, of them at least aren't going to show up very engaged in their jobs. They're going to be showing up looking for other things to do. Has anyone, can, can folks kind of attest to this here, experience this? Yeah. Uh, everyone's shaking their heads, yes. And so we've got to have a system for managing this. And really, the system is all about hiring with efficiency. Small business owners have the uh, unique and fun opportunity of being able to wear every hat in your business, which means we don't have a lot of time to go around. This is something that over the last year, my dad and I have, have struggled with specifically as our own business grows. It's how do we make time to, to do all that we need to do? Because we don't have HR departments, because we don't have full-time recruiters working for us, and we could probably use that a lot of times, but don't need to be paying for that right now, we've got to find a way to hire with efficiency. And that's what I want to go over right now. So just very simply, what is the Redmond Growth Hiring System? First thing is this, is you need to post job opportunities everywhere candidates might see them. And you can't tell me or your coach that people aren't out there until we've exhausted where job opportunities are being shown. And here's the way to think about it. Uh, you guys probably know fairly well the candidate pool and their kind of world. You know, the world of a plumber looking for a job, the world of, of a carpenter looking for a job, the world of a laborer looking for a job. What you want to ask yourself is real simply, where is everywhere that those candidates would even think to look for a job opportunity? And do we have that job opportunity for our position, for our company posted there? You know, so we have the, 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 the main job boards, you know, we have Indeed. I, I think a lot of contractors almost view Indeed similar to Home Advisor in that it's like, I'm paying money for this and I don't know what I'm getting. Almost every time I later hear those same people say, Robert, I hired someone and they came from Indeed. So Indeed, you're going to spend money and it's going to take time, but a lot of times you can find your candidate. There's Craigslist, there's Facebook, there's ZipRecruiter. But even more than that, 
have we posted a poster in our supply houses that we have plumbers going to every week? Are there different trade schools where we could talk to some of the instructors or talk to some of the administration at that trade school and let them know that we're hiring? You know, do we have posters uh, finished there, uh, uh, posted there? Uh, there's actually a quick story I want to share uh, with you guys, uh, the creativity of, of a better plumber. Uh, so this is the company I mentioned earlier based in Denver, and they got 17 trucks, which to keep 17 trucks busy, that creates a huge hiring need, right? And so we had jobs posted everywhere. We were doing all the stuff I'm talking about, and we still needed more candidates. So what did the owner do? Jeff Watson went out and rented a taco truck and he parked it right across the street from a supply house he put up signs that said free lunch for journeymen he had 60 different journeymen over the course of two three hours come through his food truck and for every single lunch that he gave out he also included a now hiring card which just uh, was a brief overview bullet points of the benefits of working for the company. And so that's not a very common strategy, but I share that story to share the kind of thought process that he went through from this concept. He said, where are the guys at and how do I get their attention and came up with this crazy kind of plan. And so, ask yourself that same question where are my people looking for opportunities and do i have that opportunity posted so that's the first step is post jobs everywhere second step as much as possible when new applicants come in immediately contact the applicant as much as possible that may be hard for some people especially if you're still in a truck especially if you're still meeting with customers sending out estimates doing all, all, all the work you know, wearing a lot of hats in the business. That could be tough. Very least, beginning of day, end of day, make sure we're checking to see if new applicants come in and we're contacting them. Uh, get into a flow at the very least of making pri uh, 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 hiring a priority because the faster that you respond to the applicants, the faster that you're gonna get an interview scheduled. Also, on a lot of these job boards, like Indeed, they have autoresponder tools where you can create a pre-written email that every time an applicant comes in, you can send that email to the applicant without having to type a new email. That means that you can really quickly, right when these applicants are coming in, pull up your Indeed, fire off the email. It takes a minute and a half, but you're contacting every single person that comes in quickly. For jobs with a higher applicant volume, okay, uh, these are going to be like a CSR type role, an uh, office administrative type of position, a helper, a laborer, an apprentice, folks where you don't need a license and, and folks where there's a lot more uh, jobs where there's a lot more people applying. Hold a weekly group interview. We can get into more of the specifics of, of what that is, but real simple, you just set a time of when you're holding your interview and you can include that in your autoresponder. Hey, I'd like to invite you to an interview. It's going to be this Wednesday at 5 p.m. Make sure you set the place for that interview. We're going to have it in our offices. Maybe you don't have an office. Maybe you can't have it in your office. I've had clients uh, pay uh, like a holiday in $100 just to use their conference room. You know, where I've had people meet in the parking lot of a gas station. I've had people meet at McAllister's Deli or a Panera Bread. Set a place where you can hold the group interview every week. And then have the set outline of what you're covering. What this allows you to do is it allows you to operate a hiring system and it only ends up literally requiring you maybe an hour and 15 minutes of your week. And 45 minutes uh, and, and uh, to the hour of that time, it's just spent in the group interview. And you don't even have to think about what you're covering if you have an outline that you're going to cover every single time. So set time, set place, set outline for jobs. I would not necessarily recommend doing this for higher skilled jobs like journeyman related jobs unless you're fully staffed. If you're fully staffed, I would encourage you to keep those jobs posted and keep these interviews uh, running so that you can at least have a steady flow of new possible people 
when challenges may arise in your business. You know, my dad, Tim, he went over uh, a very common scenario of being held hostage. You don't always know when that's going to happen. You don't always know when uh, someone is going to make a huge mistake that's going to cost your business money and you recognize it's due to carelessness and you need to get rid of them. You know, by having that weekly group interview, you're able to have people come in, able to say, hey, we may not be able to hire right now, but we want to talk to you again in the future. Three weeks goes by, something happens, you need to replace an employee, you give that guy a call back. Hey, remember the group interview you attended uh, three weeks ago? I'd really like to give you an opportunity. Why don't you come out and shadow with us? The next step is to invite qualified candidates to ride along or shadow. One of the cool things about the group interview is, is this, is you're going to get a really quick impression of who's a candidate that you want to work with and who's not. And that candidate doesn't even know, doesn't even need to say a whole lot for you guys to know that. Chances are most of you can make a pretty good judgment call about someone uh, just by the way that they present themselves and just by the first few words that they say whenever they meet you. They don't need to go into a whole lot of detail for you to know that that would be probably a person that'd be worth that would be worth talking to. So during that group interview, any of those people that may be qualified, invite them to shadow, invite them to ride along with you. Hey, a lot of candidates, they ask, uh, what's a day in the life like? Why don't you come out to uh, our, our business for four hours? Why don't you come out for a day? Why don't you come out for a couple hours? Sit in the truck with me. Sit in the truck with one of the guys. Come sit in our office for a little bit. Get a good feel of what this company is. Get a good feel if you like it. And you as an owner gets a good feel of who that person is. You know, I've had people in a group interview think someone was a really good fit. And when they come into shadow, they're sitting with another team member. And they're immediately asking, a, like these candidates immediately start asking questions about like, hey, do you think this place is very fair? Do you have to work a whole lot? Uh, you know, do they really pay you your benefits? Do they really pay on time? Like, hello, like you just vetted that person out and you didn't waste time having to do a lot of interviews or, or waste time possibly hiring someone that's going to be a toxic employee. You're able to Robert. vet them out through a shadowing or group uh, uh, right along. What's up? I was just, I'm just curious if any of the, uh, any of our clients here on the phone or on the Zoom call have had an interesting shadow experience here. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I wanted to actually ask that. Oh. Um, yeah. uh, has, has, has anyone done shadowing and had like a crazy shadowing story? I know I've got a few. Uh, let me ask, let me ask this, um, who, who has run this group interview system and can share a little bit about their experience with it? Okay, Pete, you want to share a little bit and then I'd love Roger to share too, real quick. <clears throat> yeah, we've, um, we've done it. Um, I've invited as much as like six guys at one time to come in. Uh, we had two guys show up, um, yeah. out of it, which. You know, it's it's pretty common practice. I mean, yeah. last yeah. I had two guys not show up for interviews, um, but I had them separate. We're we're in Maryland and we're pretty seasonal. It's cold here. We do pressure washing, window cleaning, roof cleaning, stuff like that. So I have the time to kind of do individual right now. But when we were busy, um, you know, it it seriously helped. It, it helped time management and everything else. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've got one guy that worked with us for a little while. Um, as winter came, he didn't want to slow down. He wanted to keep going. So he kind of took off. But other than that, I mean, it, it works. I mean, you just got to be right on these people. I mean, that's what I found. If, if you take two days to respond to them, you know, they're, they're pretty much gone. You know, they'll find something yeah. else. They're just trying to hop. And, At and least for my. No, no, I, I think that's true across the board. I mean, that was the first point is you got to respond quickly. And one of the things that, that Pete just highlighted is this, and one of the cool things about the system is he said six people said that they'd show up and then two people would show up. Well, a lot of times, especially if your calendar is booked, especially if you're, if you're having to be really efficient with your time, imagine if you blocked out six interview slots in your calendar. You're saying no to possibly a customer appointment. You're saying no to something else. You block out six appointments in your calendar maybe those six appointments there's 30 minutes each four people don't show up that's two hours of time that you had scheduled out to meet with people that's just wasted you know that you could have been using something else 
you totally eliminate that with a group interview system. Uh, Roger, do you want to share just real briefly what your experience has been? Sure. Um, so the, the time that we did a, a group interview, we were needing to hire an office position, specifically a call taker and dispatcher <clears throat> was going to be the, pri or the primary duties. Uh, we ultimately ended up having uh, 12 people that showed up to a group interview. And basically the way we or I did it, <clears throat> uh, I just rented a conference room at a hotel that was real close. It wasn't very expensive, just a meeting room. And uh, we had everything set up there. So the applicants weren't used to that type of environment. So it kind of it kind of set an atmosphere of, oh, OK, um, you know, I've got to I've got to shine as bright as I can because all my potential competition sitting around in this room at the same time. And we had a very structured agenda, uh, questions to be answered, uh, things of that nature. And uh, at the end of it, uh, my office manager and I, we, we told everyone that we'd be in contact with them one way or the other, but ultimately what we were looking for is we were gonna select three people to come shadow for at least a day, if not two days. So we set that up before everything was said and done. And then ultimately we just got together and we selected three of the ladies that kind of stood out, seemed like personality was gonna be there, uh, the type of assertiveness that we needed, those sorts of things. and. Uh, we contacted all three and all three of them uh, were able to do the shadowing. And it's amazing what the shadowing really revealed. Things that we just were not gonna get out on a group interview. And a, one of the, the candidates that we were most hopeful for come to find out, she was not gonna be able to handle any upset clients, anybody with a concern. She was just gonna get into a shell. And we would not have known that had she come, if she didn't come to shadow, because it happens. Somebody's calls, you know, if we're running late, things of that nature, or if we've just got to build, they're unhappy, but it's just a simple communication process to, to fix a misunderstanding, perhaps, something like that. But anyway, yes. that, you know, the group interview part, it really gave us a look at everybody and see how they interacted with uh, <clears throat> the other people around them. Who, who took the opportunity to stand up, who wanted to stay in the back room and not say anything. And then ultimately the shadowing was the game changer. Uh, and ultimately the, the young lady that we ended up choosing, she's been with us a little over a year and she is unbelievably good. Yeah, she's awesome. I mean, I can take any of her recorded calls and use them for training. She's yeah. impeccable, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate you guys sharing. Sure. And so, yeah, both in the group interview and shadowing, there's a lot of benefit. Um, and then the last thing that I, that, I, that I have here, something that we forget to do is um, we can interview a candidate or have them show up to a group interview. We can have them shadow and feel great about them. And we can cross our fingers and say, hey, it looks like he's gonna show up. It looks like he wants the job. I think he's gonna be on board. Just very simply, if there's a candidate you want to hire, ask the candidate if they want to come on board whenever you're ready to, to, to actually make them a job offer. What we want to do is a lot can happen, as you guys know, from when they come in and shadow, from when they come in an interview, from, from when you get really excited about someone. A lot can happen from that point to when they actually have to put in their two weeks notice and come on board. You know, their current company can try to, to keep them or try to counter offer or try to scare them with, with some uh, BS non-compete or, or, or something along that lines. A lot can change. So ask the candidate if they, want a if they want the job. That yes will build a certain commitment from them that can carry them through the difficulty of actually having to leave their current opportunity. Furthermore, and kind of a step further in this, is until that candidate actually comes on board, nurture that relationship. Whenever they tell you when they're gonna give their two weeks notice, at the end of that day, text them, hey, everything go well, really excited to have you on board. Even if, even if you just need to nurture the relationship, let's say it's gonna be two or three weeks before they start, maybe call them every week. Hey, just wanna see how you're doing, really excited to, to bring you on board, really wanna just see if there's anything else you need, any questions you have. 
nurture that relationship so that that commitment to the new opportunity is seen through the difficulty that may arise when they're leaving their current job. Okay, the next thing I, I want to cover is like, what about the journeyman and high skill positions? Robert, I can't wait to a group interview to get these guys hired. I can't wait. This I've got a high end frame carpenter. It's hard to find these guys. If if I wait to a group interview, he's going to find a new job. I totally get that, and I want to address that here. So here's some tips, some nuances, some some changes you want to make possibly for positions that are of a higher skill or a higher trade is first of all, kind of like we were talking about earlier, the faster that you can respond, the faster the candidate will too. Uh, and, and the theme I'm gonna be talking about with these tips is you almost wanna treat your hiring candidates just like you treat your leads. So if a lead comes in, if a lead calls, what do we wanna do? We wanna get in contact with the lead. We wanna answer that phone as quickly as we can. Why? because we know if we don't, they're gonna just call the next person on the Google business list. They're just gonna keep calling. Same thing with your candidates. These guys, they're not just applying to your company. Typically they're applying to 10, 12, 20 companies at once. The faster that you can respond, the faster you build top of mind awareness with them and the more of their attention that you get for your opportunity. Like I just said, you wanna treat this like you treat your leads. Second thing is, with these higher skilled positions, the faster you schedule an interview, the more likely the candidate will keep it. Get creative with how to do this. Let's say you have an applicant come in. He looks like a great fit, great tradesman, great journeyman, he's been working for a competitor of yours, there's, there's longevity, you know, he's been with that competitor two, three years. He, he doesn't jump around a lot. It's not like he's job hopping. You're like, I wanna get this guy. You call him on the phone, interview him a little bit, ask him a little bit about his background, 10, 15 minutes goes by, you're getting the basics from him and you're thinking to yourself, this guy sounds good. Don't wait until two days from now to get in front of the guy. Just say, hey, is there any way we can circle up around lunch today? Is there any way you can stop by my office at the end of the day today? I, I really think you might be a good fit here. And I just want to get from point A to point B as quickly. Maybe it's not a great fit, but let's just see if it is. Can we, can we meet up? Is there any way that I can meet you at the supply house just to talk to you, shake your hand, and introduce myself? The faster that you can schedule a time to get face to face with these guys, the more likely the candidate will keep the interview and the more attention and top of mind awareness you'll gain from them with your opportunity. The next thing here is you want to keep track of everyone you talk to with a recruiting tracking document. A recruiting tracking document is, is real simple. Is It's almost like a lead tracking document. You're just putting the, the contact information, or I'm going to show you an example here in a minute of how uh, Roger's been doing this for, for a number of months now. You're just putting the, the date of when they came in, the date of when they applied, their name, their contact info, but then write some notes about them, how good you think they are. Why is it important to keep track of a recruiting document? Because you guys, chances are, are gonna be in your industry, in your town for the foreseeable future. Chances are you're gonna be doing plumbing work in your town, you're gonna be doing water, racer, water restoration in your town, you're gonna be doing power washing in your town, for the foreseeable future. Like that's the plan right now is, is we're gonna keep this business going. What that means is that there's likely a finite, a limited amount of people in your community that qualify for your positions. And chances are, especially if they're of a higher trade, they're not gonna be going into a new career field in the future. Keeping a recruiting tracking document allows you to build a database of candidates so that if, four months, six months, two years from now, you've got a new hiring need, or maybe that candidate didn't think it was the right time, you can uh, uh, reach back out to them in the future before you even post a job on Indeed or Craigslist or whatever. You reach out to them and say, hey, I just wanted to see if anything's changed. We're looking to hire again, wanted to check in with you, uh, uh, kind of open this conversation again and, and bring them on board because you have a database of their history where you're able to keep track of who you've been talking to, uh, uh, what you think about them, what their situation is that you can easily pull from in the future. 
this is big. And I know, Roger, this is something that we've really worked on together a lot. Your hiring will not happen consistently. And the consistency is the biggest part of making this work. Unless you block out times to recruit, to hire, to interview in your calendar. It could be once a week. It could be a couple times a week. It could be, you know, on Mondays, I'm not as busy. So I'm going to block out two, three hours to just dedicate to hiring. Your hiring will not happen consistently unless you block out time in your calendar. And here's the thing, guys. Don't schedule over that time. Because if you schedule over it, it won't happen. A lot of times when we uh, schedule out business activities in our schedule, a lot of times it's like, oh, you know, I got a water heater call or, or I got a panel change out. Like that's a more important thing. Find a way to schedule around the recruiting to make sure it always happens consistently. And then my dad said always be interviewing along that same lay a b r guys always be recruiting because here's the thing if you're always recruiting or i should say it this way if you're not recruiting actively um and then you run into uh, uh an opportunity where you need to get someone in the truck or you need to replace someone quickly or let's say you you, you have so many leads come in you've got to get a new truck if you're not always recruiting, there is huge opportunity cost to that. I work with a really quick story. I work with an electrician in uh, Sacramento. Okay. Uh, this guy has a huge volume of calls coming in every single week. And there's, there was a little bit delay on bringing a new guy on board. And, uh, you know, it's tough to find a truck right now, tough to find vans. I get it. There's legitimate reasons, but, uh, he was having a delay bringing this person on, on, on board and there was really no reason for the delay other than he was just busy. And I was able to break down his call volume for him to say, hey, do you realize that each month you don't have a truck going, that you're losing $25,000 that you could be making, that you're losing an additional five to 10 grand in profits per month just because you don't have a truck running? that is costing you something it's an opportunity cost a lot of times if we're not always recruiting we get into these desperate recruiting situations oh i've got to find a guy i've got to find a guy and and, and we kind of know that the opportunity cost is there it's like ah, oh, i'm losing money i'm losing money how do you avoid that abr block out that time in your calendar always be recruiting keep track of your people do a group interview and you'll you'll avoid highly highly costly mistakes why else should we always be recruiting because people leave when we don't expect people change kind of like we talked about when we don't expect they get entitled right they get an ego uh it gets really cold and they don't want to freeze their balls off <laughs> um and uh things happen that we don't expect always be recruiting you're not held hostage by anyone then also rapid growth can occur. You know, pop in page one on Google, bam, we might hit a whole new echelon of call volume that we didn't see before. And so oh my gosh, we gotta take care of that. Always be recruiting, takes care of that. This right here is an example, guys, of the recruiting tracker. Roger, I know we've had you share a few times here today. Can you briefly share on how you use this document for your business? This is an actual screenshot of Rogers Plumbing's recruiting tracker that I just got done talking about. Yeah, so uh, I'm not going to take the credit for developing this. Uh, that's through Robert, uh, but <clears throat> through Redmond Growth. Yes. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, the thing is, you've got to put the time into it or all those boxes just stay blank. Um, so I date it when I initially talk to people. I have notes out on the side whenever I reach out to them. Um, and I try to keep it as updated as possible because I'm never going to, if I try to go off memory, things will slip through the crack. If I don't make a notation that I tried to call this guy and then with the voicemail and that I sent him a text, then I'm going to forget that I did that. And then I'm going to reiterate it and do it again in a, in a, in a couple of days. Um, 
you know, I'm not there to stalk anybody, but I, a lot of these guys, I tell them that I'm going to stay in touch with them if their situation changes, things of that nature. All those types of things, you want to make notes of that so you know what your last communication was because if you start devoting the time for it, the list is going to get long. It is. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> and that's just an example of the active recruiting tab. So there's two other tabs that go along with that. Um, and one of those tabs is actually client, uh, people that are just dead to me. I've scheduled interviews with them. They didn't show up. Too bad, sad. I'll give you another chance. And I put another tab on that one to revisit. Uh, but ultimately, you know, if you if you blow me off two times, not coming to interviews, as an example, you're just dead to me. I don't care if you apply five more times on Indeed, I'm not going to call you. Uh, and you've already got my number. So a big thing you got to call and you've got to text these guys. Uh, I mean, so we're in the plumbing industry. That's just the way of the world. A lot of these guys, I don't know how they get by with it. They don't even have voicemail set up. I mean, I wish I could live in that world, but uh, you got to text them and then they'll respond to a text. And then I immediately always send them my contact card. Uh, so they all they have to do is just save it to their phone, add me as a contact, really, really easy. Um, but more than anything, it's devoting the time, it's scheduling the time and putting the time into it. Otherwise. Yeah. And that's, and that's the last thing here, guys, what's the action we need to take? Uh, if you'd like access, we have this whole system documented. Uh, if, if you need the system, please contact your coach, but guys, there's no system until it's documented. That means putting it on paper. That means putting it in your calendar. That means actually like Roger just said, marking it down keeping track of it and not just committing it to memory because if we do that that's when things fall through the cracks that's when we forget to do the activities that's going to keep our business safe with a lot of applicants waiting to come in so that's the action that's all i want to cover today i know that that was a lot I, it's, it's a pretty big topic to cover in, in just like 30 minutes here real quick before we head out here today i want to be respectful of everyone's time any questions about this system any questions at all? Hiring. No, I think we're good. So guys, main takeaways, always be recruiting, respond quickly, interview quickly, and get creative with where people can see your job. If you can really do those four, and I'd also add, put it in your calendar. If you can really do those five things, that's going to change the hiring climate. I don't care how difficult it is to find your people. That's going to change the hiring client. So anyway, guys, I want to go ahead and, and uh, wrap up here today. Uh, let's make it a uh, we're almost in February here. Let's make this an awesome year. We got the first month already behind us. We set our goals this month. If we need uh, uh, to get better focus on the goals going forward, use this as an opportunity to get refocused. But let's uh, continue to have a great year. And uh, we so appreciate everyone being here today. Oh, yes, we need to do the uh, three, two, one. Okay, so here, here's what we're going to have everyone do. I told you guys that we're not going to stop doing this. Okay, <laughs> a Redmond growth. I want everyone to unmute their mics. Unmute their mics. I'm going to count down. After I say one, after I say one, I want us to all get cheesy with it, get get stupid with it, get weird with it. I want you to just scream growth and see how that affects you, all right? Okay, ready? Three, two, one, growth! growth. Oh, there we go. Growth.